The podium to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, His Excellency Keith Rowley. Thank you very much, President. Vice President Joe Biden, Secretary of Energy Moniz, Amos Oxstein, Special Envoy and Coordinator for International Energy Affairs, President of Panama, Presidents, Prime Ministers, Ministers, Representatives of the private sector. I want to thank the United States, Vice President Biden and his team for giving us this opportunity for, to spend time discussing and being enthused and encouraged to focus more on this very fundamental area of energy sustainability. The Caribbean Community CARICOM recognizes that given the enormous scale of the resources of our respective countries, renewable energy can and should be contributing more to the regional energy mix, thereby increasing the prospects for energy security. For example, within the community, the aggregated contribution of renewable power to the electricity sector has almost doubled over the last decade, from around 5% in 2005 to 9.1% in 2015. We have now set a target for aggregated contribution of renewable energy to power generation within the region of 47% by 2027. Every country within CARICOM has either updated or is in the process of updating energy policies and electricity regulations to promote greater use of renewable energy and increase efficiency in the way in which energy is produced, delivered, and used. My own country, Trinidad and Tobago, has been making steady progress. We are the only net energy producer within CARICOM, with as much as 45% of GDP and nearly 60% of government revenue derived from oil and gas. Nonetheless, in October 2015, my administration set a target of 10% renewable power generation by 2021. This will require the development of around 150 megawatts of renewable energy resources. And we are looking to solar and wind to provide options for this. Legislation developed as part of a comprehensive policy for renewable energy in Trinidad and Tobago is also on the cards. On the efficiency side, blessed by a power sector in which natural gas accounts for 98% of generation, Trinidad and Tobago has achieved around 60% efficiency, almost twice the regional average. In transmission and distribution too, average losses of around 6% is in keeping with global best practices. We recognize, however, that much more needs to be accomplished, and more critically, the important role of the private sector in supporting the energy ambitions of our government. Hence, Tax credits and incentives have been developed to attract some of the investments necessary for meeting our objectives and targets. The case of Montserrat, the smallest member state, is symbolic of the commitment of the community. 
With help from the technical team of the CARICOM Secretariat, Montserrat has developed a modern sustainable energy policy and implementation plan. Through a combination of solar and geothermal energy, supported by energy efficiency measures, renewable energy power generation is expected to provide 100% of electricity supplies by 2020. Electrification of the transport sector is also part of the national plan to transform Montserrat into an economy that is completely dependent on indigenous low carbon sources of energy that are predictable in supply and cost and equitably available to all. Since the Energy Security Summit of January 2015, Jamaica updated its laws to provide a modern codified system of regulating the generation transmission, supply, distribution, and dispatch of electricity. This allowed a project of 78 megawatts of utility-scale renewable power generation using wind and solar energy, which was already in the works to be fast-tracked. The story of these three countries of diverse geography, socioeconomic circumstances, and energy potential in a sense, tells the story of the Caribbean community, that despite our differing situations, we have found commonality within the understanding that the current low price of oil, which impacts our countries in different ways, ought not to compromise our pursuit for increased energy security, the desired outcome of which equality in access to quality energy services for citizens. It's in that context that we received the recommendations of the Task Force for Energy Security. That task force was proposed during the visit of President Barack Obama to the region in April 2015, a little over a year ago. Earlier presentations indicated that the task force has identified, among other things, the need for the actions pursued by the Caribbean Energy Security Initiative, the CESI and that is to support the improvement of the governance and investment climate for clean energy within the region. This morning, the importance of the regional coordination framework for the Caribbean Sustainable Energy Roadmap and Strategy, commonly referred to as CSIRM's platform, and the Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency, the CCREEE, to the acceleration of regional markets for energy efficiency and clean energy investment were highlighted. This importance has also been highlighted within the report of the task force. Our countries, as demonstrated by the example provided a moment ago, will continue to advance the governance reforms that are necessary for the energy transitions to which we have committed ourselves through national and regional targets. The targets in all cases are ambitious, though realistic, and require, all, above all else, partnerships, private sector, public sector, local and international partnerships. The United States has also put together a financing program, the Clean Energy Finance Facility for the Caribbean and Central America, which is intended to provide early stage funding to catalyze greater private and public sector investment in clean energy projects. Facilities such as these can support the preparation and the risking of projects, which will bring them to a suitable stage of bankability and help the region to transition at an accelerated rate. In this sense, I must mention the compliment and complement the GeoSmart facility of the Caribbean Development Bank and the IDB, which are providing the Eastern Caribbean states with country appropriate funding that targets the de-risking of geothermal projects. We anticipate the additional support from the United States and other partner governments, as well as the multinationals and IFIs. Despite the progress made, however, the Caribbean community is still fairly early in the process of growing the clean energy sector. Using a soccer analogy to describe clean technology investments within the Caribbean, there has been some shots on target, some misses, and some goals scored, but it's far too early to call the game. 
Much of the progress that is to come will depend on partnership with the private sector. The last 10 years of progress within the region is beginning to mature. So, the private sector representatives here today, I say to you, fortune favors the brave. Go brave in the Caribbean. In closing, therefore, I thank our development partners for demonstrating action that shows an acceptance of energy security and is shared. And that's a responsibility shared between the private sector, the public sector, and the multinationals. In particular, I thank the government of the United States for providing this opportunity to renew dialogue on this matter, which is of critical importance to our individual and collective sustainable development agenda. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much to your United States colleague for looking after us so very well. Thank <laughs> you.